let's say I'm given a list and I want to print all the permutations of that list. So for example, if I have one, two, three, then the permutations that I want to print are going to be one, two, three, and then one, three, two, and then I have two, one, three, and then two, three, one. And finally, I have three, one, two, and three, two, one. And they don't have to be in this order. And then they're also just basically all the possible arrangements. So any element can be at any location here. So how do we go about doing this? Well, this is actually a classic backtracking recursion problem. So we can define a recursive function and we can perform a step and then recurse again. And then after that recursion function is called, we backtrack. So we undo the step that we just did. And so that makes sure that we don't make any irreversible changes. So let's see how we're going to actually implement this. So here I've pasted the pseudocode that we're going to use for this function. So basically our function is called permute and it takes two parameters, list and front. So list is going to be any particular permutation of the list at any point. And then front is going to represent the index that we are currently looking at. So what does that mean? Well, basically with this function, in order to actually make it work, we need to have front go from index zero all the way to the end of the list. And so for each step, for each step of whatever front is, we're going to iterate from front to the end, and we're going to keep swapping the index between front and end of list. So that's actually going to help us generate those permutations. And every time we perform a swap, so that's right here, we're going to permute with the new permutation. So list right here is now a new permutation and we're going to increase front by one. So then we don't keep swapping values that we've already swapped. So for example, if we've already looked at the first maybe three indices, we're not going to go back and look at them. Instead, we're going to swap the fourth index onwards with any other indices and then the fifth index onwards and then the sixth, seventh and so on and so forth. And once we do the permutation, once this stops recursing, we're going to then swap back. So when we swap the elements back, we're actually restoring the list to what it looked like before. And as we backtrack, it's eventually going to look like the original list that we fed as input. Now the stopping condition for this is going to be if the front is at the end of the list, because if front is at the end of the list, then there are no more swaps that we can actually make. So in that case, we have a permutation. It's a unique permutation. So we're going to print it and return. And so that's this part right here. So the main backtracking component that we see in this algorithm is right here. We're swapping, so we're making a change to the list and then we're permuting with the list. And again, going closer to our stopping condition by saying front plus one, and then we're restoring what we had before with the swap right here. So let's go ahead and model this out with this particular example. So we'll open a new page and we'll just start by writing out a tree. So the root of this tree is just going to be the list one, two, three. So one, two, three, and that is our root. From here, there are three ways we can branch out and we'll see why there are three ways. So let's just draw these branches. So we can go this way, this way, or this way. And at each of these branches, we're going to see that our front, we're gonna call it F, our front F is equal to zero. So this is kind of the level that we're at. F equals zero, F equals zero, F equals zero. So this basically means that we're going to be swapping elements at index f and then anything beyond f. So for example, we'll swap f and f plus one and then f and f plus two and then f and f plus three and so on and so forth. So here we only have three elements. So we'll swap zero and zero, we'll swap indexes zero and one, and then we'll swap zero and two. So that is going to represent each of these branches. That's why we have three branches because we only have three elements at first. We're going to have one potential list be one, two, three. And the reason for this list is because our swap index was zero. So S equals zero. So we basically swapped indices F and S and that was just zero and zero. So there really was no change. But then in the second child, we could have S equals one. And in the third child, we could have S equals two. So in this first case, if we have F equals zero and S equals one, then that means we're swapping at indexes zero and one. So we have two, one, three. And then with the third child, we are swapping at indexes zero and two. So we have three, two, one. Next, we can proceed down the left child. So 
Here, this only has two possible branches. So we can only go here and here. And that's because we only have two indices that we're considering now. Because at this point, f equals one and f equals one. And that's pretty much the same for the rest of these. So I can draw two branches and these ones as well. And all of these are at level f equals one, f equals one, f equals one and f equals one. So now what we're doing is we're going to say that any swapping index that we are swapping with index f, which is now index one, has to be greater than index one. So that means we'll swap index one with one and index one with two. And those are only two that are available. So we only have two branches for each. So let's just write down each of the swapping indices, each of the possible ones. So this one could be s equals one or s equals two. This could be s equals one or s equals two. And then this could be s equals one or s equals two. And now we can write out those possible lists for that. So we could have, if we're swapping index one and one, that's no change. So we'll have one, two, three. And then if we're swapping index one and two, then we would have one, three, two. And then under this branch right here, we could be swapping one and one, so that's going to be no change. So that'll be two, one, three. And then in this fourth branch, we're swapping index one and two. So we're going to now have two, three, one. And finally, in these last two branches, we're swapping one and one and one and two. So it's going to be the same that we had before. So in this case, it's going to stay. So three, two, one. And then this last one here is just swapping index one and two. So that's going to be three, one, and two. Now that we have this, we can go for one more rotation. So this is going to be F equals two. And that's the same for the rest of them. And each of these only has one branch just because now we're at the end of the list. So there's only one element that we're considering swapping with. And that's actually going to be that index itself. So here, f equals two, and then f equals two, and then we'll do that two more times. So f equals two and f equals two. So for each of these branches, we're going to see that we maintain the same list. So here we'll have one, two, three, and then we'll have one, three, two, and then here we'll have two, one, three, and then we'll have two, three, one, and finally three, two, one, and three, one, two. And again, all these remain the same because the only S that we see is going to be two. That's the only swapping index because front is very close to the end. So S equals two, and we'll just write that for the rest of these as well. So now that we have all these, we can recognize that this is where we're going to stop because now we have all of our lists. We can't actually do any more swaps. So we'll see that our final permutations are going to be this one, this one, this, 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 and this. So let's actually track how this is going to iterate. So this is going to imitate a depth first search. So we'll start right here and we'll go in this direction and then we'll go down here and down here. So we'll print this and then we'll go back up here and we'll proceed in this other branch. And then we'll go down here, print this, and we'll go back up, go back up here and go back here. And now go this way and print that down here and then go back up, go back up here and then go in this direction, go here, print this and we'll go back up, go back up again, go back up. And finally, we have one more branch here. That's this one here. And we'll go left again and then down. And so we'll print three, two, one. And finally, we'll go back up, up, and then down, down, print this one, go back up, up, up. And that's all that we have. All right, so now that we've demoed this example, let's code this out. We'll start our code by defining our function. We'll call it permute. So def permute list. And then we need one more parameter that's going to be f. And f is just our front. And we'll just default this to zero because that's where we're starting anyway. Now to begin this function, we need to first make a check for our base condition, our base case. So if f is greater than or equal to the length of list, that means that there are no more swaps we can make. So we can just print the list and see whatever permutation it has, and then we'll just return. Now, if this base condition is not satisfied, then we can use our loop to do all those possible swaps. So we'll say for s in range f, 
and then length of list. So we'll go from the front to the length of the list and S is going to be our swap index. And first we'll do the swap. We'll say list at F and list at S is equal to list at S and list at F. And so that swaps it for us. And then we'll do our permute function again. We'll recurse here. So permute list. So this is the new permutation with F plus one being our new F parameter. And once this recursive function is done, we will restore what we had before. So we'll just copy this line and move it to line eight. And that's all that we have to do for this function. So let's go ahead and test this out. So we'll test this out with the case that we worked through the example with. So we'll say permute one, two, three. And let's just see what this gives us. So in the sidebar here, we see that we get six results. We get one, two, three, one, three, two, two, one, three, two, three, one, three, two, one, and three, one, two. And this is as expected. And we can even do this with, let's say, four numbers. And let's say we just switch it up a little bit. So maybe I might do two, four, six, and eight. And so I run this and I get all the possible permutations of these. And so I should end up with 24 permutations, which is what I end up with. So that's it for this video and I hope this was helpful.